The Sony RX0 Mark II is a brand new, tiny, durable camera that has a one inch sensor, can withstand the elements, and will shoot 4K internally. But is it any good? Let's get it out of its box. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So when the RX0 Mark I came out, I was super excited about it, and it disappointed the crap out of me. So today, I'm excited to try out the RX0 Mark II, Hopefully it's a little bit better. Before we get too far into the video, however, I'd like to thank my friends over at B&H Photo for loaning me the RX-0 to check out for a couple of weeks. If you'd like to get your very own copy, there will be links in the description below. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna unbox it today. We're gonna try it out a little bit, see if it's any better than the RX-0, which was a super disappointing camera because it wasn't very good. Especially not, I think it's good for like certain people, but like for the online content creator, it had a lot of limitations. In the box, you get all the little documentation, which is great. You get a Sony credit card. That's dangerous, I can't have that. Don't let the everyday wife know that I said the word Sony credit card, I'll get cut off. <laughs> okay, so what else do we got in the box? We have the Sony NP BJ1 battery, which really kind of sucks because I have like 10 of these BX, these NP BX1 batteries that I use for my RX100 Mark V. Uh, yeah, I just kind of wish that, kind of wish these batteries work. So we get that battery. What else do we get? We get an HDMI clamp, which I guess is useful. Uh oh, we get the wrist strap, which means one thing. Again, I love talking to you guys. I love finding out who actually uses these things. So comment below, let me know if you use the wrist strap that comes with your camera. This one feels cheap AF. Uh, this one feels super cheap, but oh look, it does say, can you see that? It does say Sony on it, so you know it's a first party stri camera strap when you go to steal the camera. <laughs> Comes with a micro USB cable, which means that this has a micro USB port, which bleh, And a, a charging, charging brick. That is about it. I mean, this comes, this is not a very, this is not a, you don't get a lot of stuff with this, but again, it's not necessarily, that's not what the camera's for. This is supposed to be a minimalist camera. Um, man, it feels good though. I will say that the original RX-0 also felt fantastic. Like I said in the beginning, it's supposed to be waterproof. It's supposed to be durable, rugged. I hesitate to call it an action camera, um, but it can be used in certain situations like that. And that, oh man, it feels great. Like, I can't tell if it's made of metal entirely all the way around or, it, it doesn't necessarily feel like metal, but it feels like metal and not at the same time. If that's, I don't know if that makes any sense, but it, it at the same time feels like it's not metal and that it's metal at the same time. I don't know. Uh, but you can see here it has an F4 24 millimeter with a 35 millimeter equivalent, one inch sensor in there. So you get a 24 millimeter F4 equivalent um, Tessar lens. It does feel really good. On the top, you've got the power button and the record button. On the side, what do we have here? Well, there's where the battery goes. I doubt the battery had. Sorry, I grabbed the NPBX1 battery by mistake, thinking that we could just keep going, but hopefully we have some, hopefully we have a little bit of power in here. And then on the back, we've also got the micro SD port, the USB, the HDMI, and the audio. One of the big benefits of this tiny camera is this is about the smallest camera you can get that has a dedicated mic input on it, much like the FDR X3000, which is really great. And then the big, the big thing and why this is the camera that you know, Sony calls a vlogging camera, but they call all their camera vlogging cameras anymore, is the flip up screen. Now, now that, that's adorable. That's about the most adorable screen I've ever seen. Look at that, it's, it flips up just like it's big brother, the A6400 up there, it flips too. I can flip too, dad. <laughs> flip up screens are, are incredibly useful. So we got display, menu, let's see if we got any power. Let's turn it on, did it come with any power? Ooh, it did. Okay, English. Uh, we will not set time and date yet. No card, okay, so we got a little bit of battery life in it. Um, the screen does look relatively high quality. It's super small, so you can see all of the functionality. I'm not sure how easy you could see it like, I'm not sure like how useful that would be, but I will, can you see that it, it does have face tracking on it? Can you see that? I don't know if you're able to see that or not, but it does have face tracking on it, but this does not have autofocus continuous. It has autofocus single, so you focus once, 
then you can start recording. Um, but unlike the RX100 Mark V, the A7 III, or the A6400, it does not have continuous autofocus. So once you hit focus once, that's what you got. But the screen does look really good. Like that is a good, I gotta give them credit. Like that screen, I didn't think their screen was gonna be useful at all, but it actually looks pretty darn good. Let's see if we can set it up. What, what do we got here, JPEG? No, ain't nobody shooting JPEG on this thing. Maybe somebody's shooting JPEG. I'm not shooting JPEG on this thing. It does have the new version of the Sony menu system, which is very important. Um, it can shoot, it looks like it can shoot 4K up to 30 frames per second. We'll drop it down into 24 because we're giving that a shot. High frame rate, how high will it go? 60 frame rate, oh, it'll do 240 frames per second, much like the RX100 Mark V. It's actually, it's got a lot of the things that I look for in a Sony camera, so steady shot on. So this does not have in-body image stabilization, but it has a version of electronic image stabilization. Hopefully works out pretty well. I mean, Sony makes some pretty good stuff, so I hope that they're able to figure that out for us. But everything else, this looks just like the standard uh, menu system on a regular Sony camera. Does it have clear, Im it has clear image zoom. So you can actually get some zoom out of this thing. Looks like you can get two times zoom, so it's 24. So you can get up to 48 millimeter zoom on this thing without any image loss, because that's what clear image zoom means, is you zoom in without any image loss. Okay, so this is way more versatile than I thought it was gonna be. What this needs to do to sell me on it is it's gotta be able to record for a decent amount of time without overheating. Like when I use the RX-0 Mark I, it would overheat on me in 1080p in like five minutes. So if this can do better than that, I will be very impressed. But the battery's about to die, so let's charge it up a little bit, then we will do an indoor test, and we'll do a quick outdoor test and see how it works. See you in just a second. Okay, and we're back. I let it charge for a few minutes. I popped it onto this Manfrotto Pixie. Um, so yeah, let's turn it on. Let's see what the image quality looks like. Now I will say, the more I use this darn thing, um, the more I'm getting excited about it because when I initially reached out to b &H to see if I could try this out, um, I still had some bad feelings about the RX-0 Mark I because I definitely did not like that camera. Um, but the more we mess around with this thing, ooh, Okay, so you hit functions, you get the normal function button. So it's really, it's very much like just a regular Sony camera, which is pretty cool that you fit it all into this tiny little package. Okay, we're in picture profile one, shutter speed 50, yep, 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 yep. Menu, let's, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually plug in our audio device to this to see how the audio sounds. So let's, audio recording level, okay, we're at one which is where you wanna be. You can see everything about it. I really like that. We've got it on auto ISO, we've got it on auto everything. So let's just set it down. So we're gonna switch out and recording. Okay, so this is the indoor image quality of the RX Zero Mark II and it's plugged into my audio device that you just heard on the A7 III. So this is how it would totally work as a studio camera. Again, it's a one inch sensor, so it's much like it's a one inch sensor, so it's very comparable to the RX100 Mark V. The problem is though, it's a standard F4 lens, like there's no way to increase the aperture. Whereas on the RX100 Mark V, it's got a 1.8 open at the wide end and you can stop it down, it's got ND filter, stuff like that. So we'll have to see how this ends up working out, but this is the indoor image quality. It's at ISO 2500, hold on, let's, let's uh, Let's bump up the, uh, let's not do that because the image quality probably looks pretty bad if the ISO is that high. We'll take it to ISO 600. Okay, so we're now at 70% of the, we're now at 70% of the light. Ooh, we gotta stop this down a little bit. And okay, so this is the image quality. Ooh, the screen turned off. Does the screen just turn off like that? Apparently, okay, you can't refocus when it's recording. That's something I did not know. So, okay, this is the indoor image quality. Let's head outside. Let's see how it works outdoors because with the sun as a light source, it should be perfectly fine. So, see you out there. <laughs> okay, we are now outdoors with the Sony RX0 Mark II. Now, you might notice that the footage is a little more stuttery than normal uh, because something that I didn't realize and I'm finding out now as I'm playing around with this is this has a fixed aperture. So it's not F4 and stop it down. This is just an F4 camera. So we had to bump up the shutter speed to compensate for that because I don't have like an ND filter for this. So we are currently outdoors. Thankfully, it's not too much brighter. Uh, but yeah, this is the image quality you can expect to get outdoors with the RX0 Mark II. Now I do, one of the things that I'm finding out like right now making this video is I actually really like this camera a lot. 
Um, I really like how small it is. I like that you can see the screen. I've got a histogram on here right now so I can kind of see my exposure. It's basically got all of the functionality of a regular Sony camera, but in a teeny tiny little body. The problem's gonna be, and we'll find out more on this as we, you know, we continue to make videos, we'll compare this against other cameras. The problem's gonna be the price. Like this is not a cheap camera when you consider, you can get like a used RX100 Mark V for like 500 bucks. You can get a fully functioning camera for cheaper than this thing, so. Uh, we're gonna have to uh, I'm not yet uh, totally sold on this, but this is the image quality What would you guys like to see out of the RX zero mark II? leave a comment below? I'd love to hear from you and we will catch you next time. Thanks for watching